Hi y'all, it's good to have you here again. Over 750 people have worked on the Lucy spacecraft since 2014 for this 4 billion mile trip over a 12 year span that will visit at least 8 new objects. If you want to know more about this special mission, it's starting right now. First, let's talk about the name. Lucy is a clear reference to the Lucy fossil discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia that forever changed the way we understood human history. The Lucy spacecraft goal is to achieve the same objective by studying at least 8 Trojan asteroids. Those Trojans are materials from the early years of the solar system, remnants of the giant planet's formation. With the results the probe will be able to gather, scientists will find clues about the different theories explaining the formation of the solar system. Some of them say the planets roughly stayed at the same distance to the Sun, while others, in particular the Nice model, say the planets moved a lot in the early days of the solar system. Therefore, studying mostly unaltered witnesses of the use of our system might help us correct our history books. No probe ever went to visit this population of asteroids. This will also help us better understand the other families of small objects in the solar system and even how the other stars are forming their own planets. To be called a Trojan, an asteroid has to be at the same distance to the Sun as Jupiter, an orbit or star in the same period of time as Jupiter. They are not the only stable population of small bodies in the solar system, we also have a lot of them trapped in a 3 to 2 resonance with the giant planet, but the Trojans are on another special place called the Lagrange point. Joseph Louis de Lagrange was a mathematician of the 18th century and he solved the three bodies problem. It means he solved the equations rolling the orbits of a small body around two bigger ones. There are five Lagrange points called L1 to L5. Points 1 to 3 are aligned with the two main parents. L1 is widely used by Sun observation satellites, while L2 is best for telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope about to launch later this year. But those three first points are unstable. Satellites are forced to spend some fuel from time to time to remain in position. L4 and L5 also are stable, which means if you place something there, say an asteroid, it will remain in the same place by itself. Although they are clearly linked to Jupiter, they are not moons or in fact really far away from the planet. Around Jupiter, asteroids placed near L4 and L5 are called the Trojans, mainly because the first one discovered were named after the Trojan War. There are Trojan-like families linked to other planets, Neptune has a few and Mars has two. The Trojan is a very diverse family with very diverse characteristics. They are all very dark, which could come from the sun's radiation and come in two colors, red and less red, and with three different spectral types, although we weren't able to get a full spectral analysis from Earth. This means they were most likely not all formed the same way or at the same distance from the sun, but ended up gathered together. The NIST model of the evolution of the solar system actually explains that very well, with the gas giants migrating quickly and scattering the initial huge population of asteroids that did not aggregate into a planet. Asteroids that ended up trapped on the L4 and L5 points therefore could have come from various initial points around the system and could deliver a testimony of these events. But that's just a theory that needs to be confronted to reality, hence this mission. Trojans are not well known because to this day all the previous missions were oriented towards the main belt or the Cooper belt, leaving the Trojans undisturbed. With the Lucy mission there is an opportunity to visit a lot of those asteroids with a single mission, sampling the diversity of the asteroids in a single shot. This single mission will give us as many encounters with Trojans as all the main belt asteroids mission combined. The rocket used to launch a Lucy spacecraft is ULA's Atlas V-401, which is the smallest Atlas V with no strap on booster on a small fairing. ULA's history of perfect high precision launches will send the probe on a slightly elliptical orbit around the Sun with a period of exactly one year. This means after a launch plan for October 16 this year, the probe will come back at us in October next year and Earth's gravity will slingshot it on a more elliptical trajectory. But that will not be enough, and in December 2024, a second slingshot will further increase the eccentricity of the orbit, allowing it to encounter the L4 swarm of asteroids. But before this main encounter, the spacecraft route will cross that of the main belt asteroid aptly named Donald Johnson in April 2025, and that will be an opportunity for scientific observation as well as a rehearsal. 
This is a member of the Urigoni family coming from a collision 130 million years ago, which makes it extremely young by asteroid standards. The object is 4 kilometers wide and has a very elongated shape or is a binary system. It's rotating in about 10 days, which means we will not have a full detailed view of its surface. More than two years later, the 12th of August 2027 will be the first Trojan encounter. Yuri Butters with its 68 kilometers is way bigger and is also the result of a collision. In fact, this is the largest remnant of the only collisional asteroid family in the Trojans. All the members of this family are C-type asteroids, and in fact they are the only C-type asteroids among the Trojans. Therefore, studying Eurybates will help us find out if a regular D-type asteroid becomes a C-type when hit, and this could explain the mystery. One theory is that most of the dust was removed during the collision, exposing the inner material, but we will see if that's true. Keta is a small moon orbiting Eurybates and has been discovered recently after the Lucy mission was already planned and will make a nice addition to the family portraits. Then, one month later, on September the 15th, is the Polymeli encounter. Polymeli is 20 km wide and also extremely dark and will be a good candidate to study this kind of asteroid. Leucus, seven months later, is what scientists call the typical Trojan asteroid. It has a diameter of 38 km and a really slow rotational period of 21 days. It either has an extremely weird and elongated shape or a satellite that we cannot see orbiting real close. Either way, that will be a nice encounter. On November 11th, 2028, 15 months after the Eurybates, the last of the first four rendezvous will be Horus. Horus is a 53 km wide asteroid and rotates on itself in half a day, allowing for a complete high resolution mapping of its surface. This will conclude the encounters with the L4 swarm and the Lucy probe will then swing back towards Earth in December 2030 for last flyby of our planet. After another two years of transit, the probe will enter the L5 swarm and rendezvous with the Patroclus Menorthius asteroids. Patroclus is 110 to 115 km wide, while Menorthius is 100 to 105 km in diameter, which makes them the two largest Trojan asteroids and the two orbit one another in four days, forming a double asteroid with both elements having roughly the same mass and a circular orbit. While such doubles are extremely rare in the inner solar system, they are quite common in far regions such as the Kuiper Belt. Those far regions are the most unperturbed of the solar system. One theory predicts that such binaries were quite common everywhere in the solar system and that Patroclus is a remnant of this era. Anyway, the two elements of these double asteroids are extremely lightweight and mainly made of ice, and scientists are eager to know more about them. Patroclus is also usually quite difficult to reach due to its inclined orbit, but by chance it was crossing the ecliptic right when Lucy was crossing the orbit, which made the flyby possible. After this last encounter, Lucy's mission will finally be over, almost 20 years after the team started to work on the concept and 12 years in space. If the spacecraft is in good shape and NASA is up for it, there is an opportunity to let it fly back at the L4 swarm again for a new set of encounters and probably another main belt asteroid as well. The orbit of the mission is extremely stable and far from any perturbation, which means scientists believe that the spacecraft might stay in orbit for more than 1500 years. That's why they decided to include a message to future space travelers on the side of the spacecraft. To complete the mission, the Lucy spacecraft is relying on proof technology. Well, that's if you exclude the extremely large solar panels. The Lucy spacecraft will be flying farther than any other solar-powered spacecraft before. At the farthest point from the Sun, the solar panels will only produce 504 watts. The spacecraft core is 15 meters wide and 4 meters high with the solar panels stored, or 7.5 meters with the solar panels deployed, and it stores 700 kilograms of fuel which is half of the weight of the spacecraft. But what's important is the scientific instruments, right? Most of the instruments were not developed from scratch, but come from previous missions, which both improves reliability and reduces development costs. The LORI is a long-range imager borrowed from New Horizon. It will provide us with beautiful and detailed pictures with a resolution of 14 meters per pixel at the closest encounter. Counting the craters will help assess the age of the surface. Altes is a thermal imager that was previously used on Mars Global Surveyor on Osiris Rex. 
it would provide pictures like a thermal camera, allowing scientists to assess what the ground is made of. Big rocks will heat up and cool down faster than small boulders and dust, which is quite important in assessing what the asteroid is made of. Elwarf is a multispectral visible imager and comes from Osiris Rex and New Horizon. It will be used to determine the surface composition. In addition to that, the high-gain antenna will be used to finally determine the spacecraft position and deviation by the asteroids and therefore calculate their exact mass with great precision. And to guide the spacecraft during the close encounters, there are special cameras called Terminal Tracking Cameras or T2 cams. When approaching its target, the spacecraft will need to adjust its trajectory very precisely, although the asteroid's position is not known precisely at all. Therefore, teams on the ground will need to steer it just by looking through the cameras because there is not any kind of autonomous navigation. This will be an exciting mission and I can't wait for it to launch, although it will be one of the few last Atlas V launches before Vulcan takes over. That is, if Blue Origin doesn't mess things up once again and actually delivers the BE-4 engines in time. If you want to know more about the Vulcan rocket delays, you should definitely check this video here.